Well, good evening, Faith Family. We're so glad that you're joining us this evening on this Sunday night here for our Sunday PM service, Faith Family Church of God. If you've not already done so, please like and comment to let us know that you're joining in with us. And also share this page. If you're watching on Facebook, share this on your profile page so that we can get the Word of God to others out around us. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to click that subscribe button and then click the bell for notifications when we go live and post new content. As there is always something awesome happening at Faith Family Church of God, and we never want you to miss out. So make sure to click that subscribe button and then click the bell for those notifications. Amen. All right, before we go into our word tonight, as always, let's have our word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We just thank you, Lord, for the way that you're moving, God, in our services. God, thank you, God, for the needs that are being met, God. Thank you, God, that you are Lord over all, God, that no matter what happens in our lives, no matter what comes at us, Lord God, no matter what circumstances, no matter what comes our way, we thank you that you are for us and not against us. You never leave us and you never forsake us, God. Thank you for every promise, God, that you have for us. Thank you for always being there, God. Thank you for your provision, God. Thank you for the blessings you're pouring out on us and our families and in our church, God. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we come before you in one mind and one accord, God, lifting up each and every need, God, that everyone has here tonight, whether it's spiritual uplifting, God, from anxiety or depression or worry, Lord God, whether it is um, just physical healing in bodies, God, from COVID, from cancer, from or recovering from surgeries, uh, from shingles, uh, for those who have upcoming surgeries, Lord God, or COPD or asthma, congestive heart failure, whatever, Lord God, a common cold, bronchitis, flu, whatever sickness, God, we agree together, God, for healing right now in Jesus' name, because you are the master physician. You bore the stripes for the healing of our bodies, and by your stripes, it says in both the Old and New Testament that we are and we were healed. And so we claim that healing for them right now in Jesus' name. Let it wash over them in Jesus' name. And also, God, we come before you, God, for every need, God, and and every family, God. The, those who just need to be drawn closer together, Lord God, in their marriage, Lord Jesus. We ask, God, that you would just disperse the lies of the enemy in Jesus' name, God, and that you would draw them closer together, God, in that marriage, that marital union, God, and that they would make you the foundation, Lord God, on which they stand, Lord, and that they would just cast aside everything else, Lord God, and just focus on you and focus on each other, Lord God, and just they would grow stronger together, God, and also for the families, Lord Jesus, God, who are drifting apart, God, or who maybe have been estranged for years, we pray for them, God, that you would help them draw closer together, God, and closer to you, Lord God, because it is in you that we can find unity and peace. Lord, and right now, those who have a need financially, you know that need financially, God. We ask that you meet the need according to your will and for your glory, God. Those who have important decisions on jobs coming up or careers, Lord, in their, in their life path, God, just lead and guide their every step. Give them the wisdom that they need to make the right choices, God, and give them supernatural favor with their managers, their supervisors, their bosses, Lord God, and their co-workers, Lord Jesus, Lord, and those that they service, God, and the customers, Lord. Just give them supernatural favor over all, Lord God, with everyone. Those who have a need, Lord, whether they're in school, whatever grade they're in, or if they're in college or post-grad, Lord God, just we ask that you would move on them, Lord God, draw them closer to you throughout all of this time. Lord, and that you would bless their studies, Lord God, help them to realize, Lord Jesus, that uh, that you will bring all things to our remembrance that we study, Lord God. And then, yes, that does mean your word, but I also know that it means the, the, the things that we study, Lord God, in school, because it's, sometimes it feels like a lot, Lord God, and I know I prayed a lot, Lord Jesus, that you would bring all things to my remembrance, God, throughout school, and you did. So I pray, God, that you would bring all things to remembrance to those who are studying for academics, Lord God, and for furtherance of their education, Lord, in Jesus' name, help them to prosper in Jesus' name. Whatever the need is, we lift it up to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, Lord God, trusting and believing for every need to be met according to your will and for your glory. God, and it is all for your glory. We'll give you all the glory, honor, and praise for it in Jesus' name. And also in the name of Jesus, we come before you, God, and we ask that you would bless and anoint this word tonight. Anoint me, God, as your messenger, God, and your mouthpiece, God, the vessel that you pour out of, Lord God. Use me to pour out into others tonight, Lord God. Lord, and that you would just open our hearts and our minds and our ears and our souls to receive your word, God, that it would not fall on a single deaf ear that hears this word. 
but rather it would draw us closer to you, God, and it would challenge us, God, to draw closer to you, God, and stronger in you, Lord God, and to become more endeared to you and hunger and thirst for more of you, Lord God, to chase after you, Lord Jesus, Lord, and to be the workers in the vineyard that we are called to be, Lord Jesus. Lord, just draw us closer to you. Lord. Have your way in this word tonight, in this service tonight. Let your will be done in your will alone, God. And let everyone who needs to hear this word tonight, hear it in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory, honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. Amen, guys. All right, so again, welcome to our Sunday night service. Uh, we have been going through a study of the book of Hebrews as we've been going book by book through the Bible, different books. Last week, Sister Brenda talked about Hebrews chapter 3. As a recap, she reminded us that no matter what season we're going through, no matter what our flesh may feel like, no matter what our emotions may try to dictate to us, God always sees us where we are. There is no hiding from God. She reminds us that God is our maker. We are in his hands, and he is our shepherd. He knows every detail of our lives and he knows what is best for every single one of us. Sister Brenda reminded us that the Israelites were in an impossible situation as slaves under the Egyptian rule, but God sent Moses, a deliverer for the Israelites, to bring them out. And even God even had the Egyptians prosper them by giving them gold and money as they were leaving. And just like when they were lost in sin with no way out, our darkest night, in our darkest night, Jesus came in. He shed light, dispelling our darkness, making a way for the forgiveness of yours and my sin. So no matter what we are going through, no matter how stressed or overwhelmed that we may feel, we have a deliverer who still frees and guides his people from darkness, oppression, and sin in the hell today. And then Sister Brenda reminded us, that we are urged by the author of Hebrews to believe God and avoid unbelief, avoid a rebellious spirit, as rebellion is an attitude of defiance or one that contradicts authority. So we are encouraged to be on guard, to be certain that we don't doubt God nor his word. So far, we see that Hebrews talks about who God is. It talks about the many attributes of Jesus and his majesty as God wrapped in human flesh. And tonight, we're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 4. And if I had to give this message a title tonight, it would be Jesus, our great high priest. Hebrews chapter 4, let's read, and then we're going to break it down. Hebrews chapter 4 says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said, So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest." although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this place, they shall not enter my rest, since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience. Again he designates a certain day, saying in David, Today, after such a long time as it has been said, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to Enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. 
Seeing that then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen and amen. Oh, I feel I feel led to pray again, God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I just pray, God, you help us to soak in this word, God. I feel, I feel, God, how important all word, all of your word is important, but I feel how important this word is tonight, God. I pray, God, that it would you would help us to soak it in, God, to listen intentively, Lord God, attentively with intent, Lord God, and that you would draw us closer to you through this word, God. Lord, let every word sink into our minds and into our hearts and souls, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's break this down. Verses 1 through 5, it says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said, So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place on the se of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works, and again in this place they shall not enter my rest. So here we see that the tragic unbelief of the desert generation of Israelites escaping from Egypt, as discussed in chapter 3, serves as a warning for believers today to enter into God's rest, which is still offered to the faithful. Because God's children turned it over, turned it away time and time again, he is offering it to us. Okay? And so the news of God was shared with the Israelite people over and over and over again. They were warned over and over and over again but yet they fell to the wayside over and over and over again. Yet the generation led by Moses had even failed to enter their rest, which was the promised land because of their lack of faith, because of their unbelief. In the same way, the gospel of Jesus Christ that had been proclaimed to the audience of this book, Hebrews, was calling them into God's rest, but their unbelief would hinder them from entering into that rest. It's just like many people today. They may hear the word of God, but they don't listen. They hear it, they push it off, and unless they accept the word and accept Jesus Christ as Lord of their lives, they will not enter the kingdom of heaven, but will instead enter into the eternal flame, darkness, and torment of hell, from which there is no escape once there. It's too late at that point. Today, we have the promise of entering God's rest if we just have faith in God and in Jesus Christ. The promise of rest is so wonderful that it should concern us when we, when either we ourselves or when someone else seems to come short of it. It isn't enough to almost enter into his rest. We don't want to miss it. Hearing God's word isn't just enough. We must also be doers of the word and not just hearers only. The word of God says that. We must receive God's word with faith and then act on it. In verse 4, the theme of rest has its beginning in God's own rest after creation. The fact that Genesis makes no mention of the evening of the seventh day of creation provides even a basis for some Jewish commentators to conclude that the rest of God lasts throughout all of history. And in verse chapter 5, we are shown that the children of Israel who went against the promises of God did not enter into the rest of God in the kingdom of God because of their unbelief, because they strayed away. So from the first five verses, we can see that there are numerous examples in God's word of those who disobeyed God turn their backs on God and what happened to them when they did. And many came short of the promise of God because of it time and time again. 
So these examples given to us in the Bible should help us to realize that we need to focus on God, take our eyes off the world, off of material possessions, off of popularity, off of politics. Keep your mind's eye focused on God and be repentant at all times. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, lest we miss heaven one day. Because once we miss heaven, there is no chance of redemption. As a tree falls, so shall it lay. Where our spirit is at the end of our life, that is where it's going to stay. Whether we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our hearts and lives, and we enter into heaven, or if we die in sin, you know, even if we knew Jesus at one point, but we backslide and we die in sin, then that means that we don't enter into heaven because we died in sin. So wherever our soul is left in the balance, when we die, determines where we end up heaven or hell. Okay. In verse six, verses six through 10, since therefore it remains that some must enter it and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience. Again, he designates a certain day saying in David today, after such a long time, as it has been said today, if you will hear his voice, do not Harden your hearts. Don't push it off. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. So here we're shown again that God gives his people chance after chance after chance to repent of their sins and follow after him so that they may enter into the rest of God in heaven. See, by merely entering into the promised land, the Israelites had not entered God's rest. For David, years after Joshua had led the Israelites into the land, David had warned his generation, do not harden your hearts so that they could enter into God's rest. And see, there is more than just the rest at the end of time, the eternal rest that we're all searching for. There is more than that because as because of Jesus, when we ask him into our hearts as Lord and Savior of our lives for the forgiveness of our sins, we can rest in the arms of Jesus as he leads us in our path of life. We can have rest on this earth. Sure, we may go through a lot of stuff and we may not feel like we're at rest because we're being attacked by the enemy, but we can rest knowing that no matter what we may go through, we can rest in Jesus' arms and he will carry us and sustain us through to the other side of whatever we're facing. Hallelujah. Like David, the author of Hebrews even called the present generation to respond to God today as in even in 2 Corinthians 6 and 2, Paul tells us, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Another translation says, Today is the day of salvation. And it's just like one pastor that somebody and I was talking about recently, they were watching a pastor on television. They pastor pointed out that today is moment by moment by moment. And you see, today is now in the past. And today is now in the past. This moment's now in the past. Today is now and today is a moment later because every moment that is passing is in the past. Every moment that we experience is the here and now, every moment we experience, moment by moment, is today. Therefore, every moment is the chance for salvation. The Greek word for rest in verse 9 is different from the word used in verses 1, 3, 5, 10, and 11. The word in verse 9 means Sabbath rest and is found only here in the New Testament. Jews commonly taught that the Sabbath foreshadowed the world to come, and they spoke of a day of which all shall all be Sabbath. In other words, there's no longer any place for works as a basis for our own righteousness because Jesus finished the work on the cross. 
Also in verse 10, this rest can refer to the rest again that believers will enter into when we finish our work for God's kingdom on this earth. In other words, again, the eternal rest in heaven with God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Moving on to verses 11 through 13. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account." All this being said so far, including himself as well as his readers, the author exhorts believers to be diligent. Diligent means to make every effort. So he he tells us make every effort possible to enter that rest. Why? Because we are going to face temptation and sin day after day, moment after moment. We're going to face attack from the enemy left and right, even now more so than ever before, because the devil knows his time is short. So we must be diligent to maintain our faith in God, to keep our eyes focused on God, and to not take our eyes off of God. Do not focus on our situations. Do not give in to temptation around us. Do not let the voice of the enemy come in like a flood. And when it tries to come in like a flood, we block it out and say, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. You are a liar. The truth is not in you. My truth, the only truth, is Jesus Christ. And I will listen to him alone. Focus in on God's voice. Focus in on him and follow after him. Make every effort. Even if you have to clear your life of some things, even if you have to clear some influences from your life, some some poison from your life, whatever you have to do, focus on God. The rest that we are seeking is not automatic. It's not forced upon us. See, God is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on us. Determined diligence is required. Faith is required, and faith is not passive. It takes faith. It takes diligence to believe, no matter what may come against us. The danger is that some believers today, like the Israelites of the past, will not stand, but they will fall in disobedience and fall to the attacks of the enemy, losing hope and losing faith. And if we fall and miss the eternal rest of God, the results are unthinkable. The result is hell and we don't even know we don't even all that we've heard of is just a tenth of what hell really is verse 12 says the word of god well let's go back and read For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And verse 13 says, There is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Okay, the word of God is the measuring stick, the guidebook. Christ will use his word at the judgment seat in heaven. And then, of course, the main thing is the blood of Jesus applied to our lives. If we don't have the blood of Jesus applied to us, then nothing else matters because only Jesus' sacrifice that we accept Jesus into our hearts and lives, only that sacrifice can wash away our sins and cover us in the righteousness of God, where we can make it to heaven. But again, the Bible, the Word of God is a guidebook, and it is the measuring stick for us in our lives. God's message is alive and active. It's penetrating the even the innermost parts of a person, the most secretive parts of a person, the most hidden parts of a person. It distinguishes what is natural and what is spiritual, as well as the thoughts or the reflections when the intents or the insights of a person. God's word accurately discerns our spiritual health, whether we are alive and thriving or 
dying or dead spiritually, and it does that for everyone. It does that for church members. It does that for laity. It does that for pastors. It does that for everyone. The Word of God exposes the natural and the spiritual motivations of a believer's heart, and it exposes our weaknesses and any unbelief that we may have. It exposes them with laser-like precision and accuracy. Why? Because there is power and life in God's Word. That's why it says God's Word is alive, because it came from the very mouth of God. And as Pastor pointed out before, in the beginning was the Word, Jesus, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is the Word of God, and Jesus is God. That's why the Word is alive, because it is God speaking to us. That is why the Word is so powerful, and why it can cut so deep, because it is God speaking directly to us. And in verse 13, the phrase naked and open suggests complete exposure and defenselessness before God. We must all give account to God who sees all and knows all. You cannot hide anything from God, not even your thoughts. Even if you think or do something in the most private recesses of your own home, nobody else may see it, but God sees it all and he hears it all. He even hears your own thoughts. He knows what's going on inside your head and inside your heart. We can hide nothing from God. So because nothing is hidden from God, we need to just go ahead and be open and honest with God. Because if we try to hide anything from God, we're not fooling God, but we're only fooling ourselves. And we need to be diligent to live a life holy and acceptable unto God, believing in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives so that we can achieve that eternal rest that we are all looking for. And guys, that rest is coming. That time is coming sooner than we ever thought. Because I'm telling you, I've heard it and heard it and heard it. I know you've heard it time and time again all throughout your childhood and even now that God is coming soon, sooner than we have ever thought. But I just feel such an urgency, Pastor, Sister Brenda, myself, and I know many others feel such an urgency now more than ever before. We don't ever know when that moment is. So we need to be repentant before God at all times, be diligent to keep our eyes focused on God and to resist temptation, to resist sin, to resist the voice of the enemy, and just focus on God, focus on that eternal rest. Because if we are open and honest with God and ask for his help, then God can help us. However, if we act like we don't have a problem, if we act like we don't have sin, then how can God help us? God is a gentleman and he won't force anything on us. Again, not even himself. The only way that he will help us to enter into that eternal rest one day is if we open up and we ask him to help us say, God, I'm tired of hiding. I can't do this anymore. And I know you know it all anyway. Please forgive me. I have sinned, God. I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. Clothe me in your righteousness, God. I can't do this anymore. I need your help, God. Lead me in your path of righteousness, God. Show me the way. Keep my eyes focused on you. If you just be open and honest with God and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, then he's going to pick you up. He's going to show you the way. He's going to clean you up. He is going to help you every step of the way. We just have to ask it and receive it, and God will do so. Thank you, Jesus. Verses 14 through 16 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Verse 14 and 15 compares the high priest of the Old Testament with Jesus Christ, who is the ultimate high priest, our high priest. The high priest of the Old Testament had to pass through the temple, through the veil, separating the temple from the Holy of Holies. And they passed through that veil into the Holy of Holies, making intercession for the people of God before God's presence. And even then, they may not have known exactly what the people were, uh, were facing or doing that they were interceding for. But Jesus Christ, 
God wrapped in human flesh. I know I talk about that time and time and time again, but it is so important that we realize that that is who Jesus is. He is God wrapped in human flesh. The personification of God made imminent, made present into something that we can understand and fathom because we cannot truly understand the infinitesimal existence of God, his infiniteness in everything, but we can see and understand and we can know and have images based on historical um, accounts and things of that nature. We have that of Jesus Christ, God wrapped in human flesh. He was born on this earth. He grew up the son of a lowly carpenter, and he experienced every emotion we have or ever will experience. He experienced every temptation that we have or ever will experience. He experienced spiritual warfare against the enemy. He experienced a moment of weakness in the flesh where his flesh wanted to find another way, but then he quickly said, not my I will, but thine, Lord. Any kind of sickness, emotion, temptation, you name it, Jesus experienced it, and he went through all of it without sinning so that he can die on the cross as the ultimate sacrificial lamb, bearing our sins on himself, shedding his perfect blood, his godly blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And in the process of dying on that cross for you and for me, as the ultimate high priest, he went and he tore that veil from the Holy of Holies from the top to bottom, signifying that it came from God himself because of the way it was torn. And Jesus rose from the dead on the third day, conquering death hell and the grave for you and for me. And now Jesus is at the right hand of God, the Father in heaven, making constant intercession to God for us, his people. Hallelujah. And just like verse 16 says, because the veil that separated the Holy of Holies was torn from top to bottom, that signifies that because of Jesus' sacrifice for us, we no longer have to go to a priest to have intercession made for us or to ask for forgiveness of our sins. We can go straight to the throne of God through prayer because Jesus bridged the gap between God and man. Jesus is the bridge. Jesus is our high priest. Jesus is our lawyer. Jesus is our judge who forgives us when we ask of him. He is our healer. Jesus is our savior. Jesus is everything to us because he gave everything for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we close tonight, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, guys, I just feel so overwhelmed by his presence. Can't you just feel it right now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice for us. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you, God, for loving us even when we are unlovable, God. Thank you for looking past our faults and our sins, God, our imperfections, Jesus, and for loving us no matter what. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on that cross for us. Thank you for everything that you are to us, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's just like that song that Sandy Patty sings, you know, more than wonderful I'm, I'm going to read the words to you because I don't really know the melody. Um, but it says, He promised us that He would be a counselor, a mighty God, and the Prince of Peace. He promised us that He would be a Father and that He would love us with a love that would not cease. Well, I tried Him and I found His Promises are true. He's everything he said that he would be. The finest words I know could not begin to tell just what Jesus really means to me. And the course goes like this. For he's more wonderful than my mind can conceive. He's more He's more wonderful than my heart can believe. He goes beyond my highest hopes and my fondest dreams. 
He's everything that my soul ever longed for. Everything that he's promised and so much more. He's more than amazing, more than marvelous, more than miraculous could ever be. He's more than wonderful. That's what Jesus is to me. Verse 2 says, I stand amazed when I think that the King of glory would come to dwell within the heart of man. Oh, I marvel just to know he really loves me when I think of who he is and who I am. Thank you, Jesus. For he's more than wonderful than my mind can conceive. He's more than wonderful. He's more wonderful than my heart can believe. He goes beyond my highest hopes and my fondest dreams. He's everything that my soul ever longed for, everything that he's promised, and so, so much more. He's more than amazing, more than marvelous, more than miraculous could ever be. He's more than wonderful. That's what Jesus is to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We who were dead in our sins and exiled from God because of sin are now made alive through Jesus Christ, washed clean by his blood, clothed in his righteousness, and restored in our relationship with God through Jesus Christ with the promise of eternal rest restored to us once again, because Jesus is the perfect sacrificial lamb and our eternal great high priest. It doesn't matter what we've ever done in our lives. Nothing is too small or too big for Jesus to bear so that we can be forgiven of everything we have ever done or said and we can be restored by God to God by the blood and righteousness of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God wrapped in human flesh. That is just how much God and Jesus loves you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to continue next week with our study of Hebrews. The Sister Brenda takes us into chapter 5. So let's right now go into a word of prayer. Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. God, and I just thank you for your presence that I feel here right now. God, I thank you for this word reminding us, God, that that Jesus, that you are our eternal high priest because you bore the stripes for the healing of our bodies, God, by your stripes we were and are healed, and you shed your blood, God, dying on that cross for the forgiveness of our sins. God, you went through every temptation, God, everything that we would ever face, Jesus, and then you died on that cross shedding your blood for the forgiveness of our sins so that we can be clothed in your righteousness and the righteousness of God once again restored into relationship with you and we can have the promise of heaven one day. And God, I pray, God, right now in the name of Jesus that whoever right now feels like that they have done so much that they just cannot be welcomed back into the grace of God, God, I pray right now that their eyes would be opened. I pray right now that you would speak to them in a way, God, that they would know that it's absolutely Absolutely you and only you, God, that is, removes all doubt, God, that it removes every essence of doubt from their minds, God, and that you would speak to them and tell them that nothing is too great for me to handle, says the Lord. Nothing is too great. Lay it all on my shoulders, says the Lord. Lay it all on me. Give it all to me and just ask Jesus into your heart for the forgiveness of sins let him clothe you in his righteousness. That is what Jesus wants to tell you right now. Nothing is too big for him to handle. Just give it to him. Ask him into your hearts for the forgiveness of your sins. And then let past be in the past. Don't bring that up again. But look forward to the things of God. Because if you ask Jesus into your heart for the forgiveness of your sins, he's washed it all away. He's washed your past all away in the sea of forgetfulness. As far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered. 
So let him wash that all away right now and just focus on him and let him guide you through every path of life, every step of life. And even when we fall short, continue to ask for forgiveness and continue to keep your eyes focused on him the author and the finisher of our faith. God, I pray right now, God, that whoever needed to hear that, heard that loud and clear, Lord God, that they have accepted you as Lord and Savior Jesus of their lives and that their life is made anew. They are made a new creation in Jesus Christ right now, God. And we thank you and we praise you for that, God. Lord, help us to remember, God, that you do not sleep. You don't slumber. God, that Jesus, you make constant intercession for us at the right hand of God the Father for us every moment of every day because because you know exactly what we're going through on this earth. You know everything we have ever faced or ever will face. And because you loved us, God, you sent your son, Jesus, God wrapped in human flesh to die on the cross for us. And thank you for that. Thank you for redeeming us from sin when we ask you into our hearts. Thank you for that chance, God, to be restored into relationship with you once again. Thank you, Jesus, for being the eternal high priest, for being the sacrificial lamb, God, for us, that perfect sacrifice for us, God, because we cannot purchase salvation by our own righteousness and works because they are as filthy rags because of sin. But thank you, Jesus, that you saw fit. Thank you, God, that you saw fit to provide the sacrifice for us to restore relationship between us and you, God, that we can have that promise of heaven. And God, help us to keep our eyes focused on you, God, and to not stray, but to remind ourselves every day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Nothing shall strain me away because I know in whom I believe. It's Jesus Christ and God the Father and God the Holy Ghost. And I put my faith and hope and trust all in the Trinity the Godhead Trinity, because there is nothing else, and I know in whom I believe, and that is enough for me. That is more than enough for me, and help us to hold on to that no matter what we go through, God. Protect us in everything that we face, and keep our eyes again focused on you, God. I cannot stress that more in the and, and enough to this to these people to everyone listening god keep our eyes focused on you the author and the finisher of our faith so that we can attain that promise of rest one day and that we can have rest also in jesus christ day after day after day as he guides us through every step of life god we give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise for it lord in jesus name thank you for who you are to us god and who we are in you as we are made new by the blood of Jesus, we thank you and we give you glory, honor, and praise all in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen and amen. Oh my goodness, what a word tonight. Oh, I love it when we get to be able to spend time in the word of God together. I hope that you've enjoyed tonight as much as I have. And it's my prayer that you hunger and thirst for God more and more every day. Continue to seek after God for his will in your life. Search for him more and more every day. Read his word more and more every day. Get, get in that mindset that it's more than just a chore, but it's something that we get to do. It's something that we need to do to help us to grow in God and grow stronger in God. And it's time that we get to spend with God when we open that word up and spend time in the word and in prayer and in worship. Let's make that time every day and keep our eyes again focused on God. Amen? Amen. Don't forget that tomorrow night is Monday night prayer meeting at 6 o'clock. So we are going to be joining online, uh, Facebook and YouTube. For prayer, if you uh, pr send those prayer requests in to us through Faith Family Church of God, or if you're a member of our church, the private page, FFCOG Family page, or the Lord is My Shepherd Encouragers group from Sister Marcia, or the Special Unspoken and Spoken Request group from Sister Marcia, or send it to uh, Pastor Sister Brenda or myself by text or messenger, uh, you know, for Sister Brenda or myself. Get those requests to us any way possible. And if you have a prayer, uh, I mean, praise report, share that with us as well, because we don't, we want to rejoice with you and what God is doing in your life. Um, so Monday night, tomorrow night at six o'clock for prayer. And then Tuesday night, 630 for the youth lesson. You don't want to miss that. Of course, all ages are encouraged to attend and participate and comment in the lesson because we all want to glean from the word of God together. But of course, Tuesday nights are geared more specifically to our youth. So make sure 
that our youth are tuning in and listening and watching because we want them to get the Word of God. And then also on Wednesday night at 6.30, Pastor Little brings the Bible study for our adult Bible study group. But again, all ages are encouraged to watch and attend because it's all a chance for us, to, everyone, to glean from the Word of God together. Amen. And then again, Sunday morning, 10.45 a.m., morning worship, Faith Family Church of God, 3808 Old Brandon Road, Pearl, Mississippi, 39208. Don't forget to join us in worship, whether it's in person or on Facebook, and then that service from Sunday morning will later be uploaded to YouTube that night as well. We love you all. Have an awesome week. God bless and go forth in the peace and the power, the majesty and the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.